to Mr. UFC Vegas Fight Club TV. I'm Kyle, your host. Welcome to the podcast. And today we're going to be talking about UFC on Fox 29, Dustin Poirier versus Justin Gaethje. But before we get into that, do not forget to subscribe, like, head kick the bell icon, get involved in Fight Club TV. We are a UFC and gambling channel all in one spot. You like combat sports? This is the place to be. So, <clears throat> like I said, we're going to get into UFC on Fox 29. And, uh, you know, we're, we are going to get into two plays that we have here in the card, two straight bets that we have. And um, one is going to be a one-unit play. The other one is going to be a two-unit play, which is going to be our best bet. So far this year, we are 15 wins, six losses on our best bet. We are plus 12.35 units. Our best bet last, uh, last week at UFC 222 was Paul Felder versus Ally Quinta. We had... Paul Felder for two units on that play. Obviously, that did not happen, so we will now uh, move on to this card and um, and see how we uh, how we do. So, um, first thing I want to talk about is the um, uh, the fact that we're going to be doing, uh, which last week we did, and it was the first time we did it, is a discussion area for uh, everybody in the Fight Club to have conversations about the card as it's going on. So today we're going to be doing the, which I'll probably start to do most of the time, I'll be posting Wednesday or Thursday, the uh, picks and prediction show, and then Friday, the day of the weigh-in, I will be doing the uh, discussion area post, which basically from Friday through uh, Saturday into the fight, that's a spot for us to communicate, talk as the fights are going on. We actually had some hilarious conversations some people, you know, were disagreeing on, you know, an upcoming fight that was about to happen and, uh, you know, vice versa going back and forth. Some people were, were nailing some picks. Some people were missing some picks, but we were uh, having some great conversation in there. So I appreciate that. Keep that going, you guys. I really do appreciate all the conversation in there and the interaction. So we're going to do that again. So today, prediction show. Tomorrow, discussion thread. And I will also post in the discussion thread uh, my hero parlay, which is going to be normally seven seven, uh, you know, plays on the card, you know, obviously for, for very minimal money, but hopefully you hit it out of the park if you nail those. So the first one I just wanted to discuss, which is not a play, um, Michelle Waterson versus Courtney Casey. I did like this play. Um, I thought that, uh, you know, there was definitely some, some opportunity here, which I will probably have one of these girls in my hero parlay tomorrow. But uh, Michelle Waterson right now is plus 105. Courtney Casey is minus 122. Uh, Courtney Casey, I'm surprised that she is the favorite here. I really thought when I first heard that this fight was happening that it would have it would be Mich Michelle Wooderson. I thought Wooderson would be able to to get a little bit more uh, money towards her, or at least the odds makers would think that. And uh, I definitely see that where Courtney Casey it, it has the advantage. She's got the size advantage. She's got the reach advantage. Um, the physical attributes are there for her. But Michelle Wooderson is very fast. She's got great kicks, and I think the fact that Courtney Casey is going to want the distance because she wants to be able to leverage her uh, her reach advantage and her size advantage, but it's going to give uh, Wooderson an opportunity to, to work her kicks from the outside, work combinations from the outside. She's got great cage movement, so I think there's definitely opportunity there. Very close fight, so I'm not going to be playing a straight bet on that, but I do think that Wooderson could have the, the edge here uh, in the fight, but we will get more into that tomorrow. The other one is going to be the main event, which is Dustin Poirier versus Justin Gaethje. Uh, right now, Gaethje is minus 137, and Poirier is plus 117. I actually, um, uh, when Dustin, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Justin Gaethje's last fight with Eddie Alvarez, one of our uh, best bet plays, I best bet Eddie Alvarez there for two units, and uh, obviously we got that win. And I had said that, man, Justin Gaethje's tough, but whoever he fights next will probably be somebody, you know, more down, you know, not in competition, and he's going to get the win. And here was not the, is not the case. Uh, just, uh, Dustin Poirier is very uh, strong uh, striker, very brawlish kind of guy. Perfect matchup for Gaethje because they're both going to want to just stand in there and scrap. But I thought they would really give him a little bit more of a gimme fight uh, since he was coming in. He was 18 and 0. Now he's got his first loss. You know, but he's in there and he wants to he wants to fight the best of the best. So I definitely give Gaethje a lot of respect on that. Tough fight here. We'll dive into it a little bit more tomorrow because I do feel that there's a play here. Um, and I'm leaning a little bit more towards Poirier. But, um, you know, we'll kind of see how it goes. That the, the reason basically being is that, you know, Gaethje against uh, Michael Johnson, I thought, you know, and even against Eddie Alvarez, I mean, his output is unbelievable. 
And it's and in a five-round fight, I don't know if he's going to be able to keep that pace going. And uh, Poirier's got great cage movement. So it'll be interesting to see how that fight uh, pans out. We will talk about more of that tomorrow. But today, we're going to be getting into our two plays. Now, um, the first one-unit play that we have is Israel Adesanya versus Marvin Vittori. And uh, in this fight here, uh, Adesanya is minus 265, and uh, Vittori is plus 250. So going over these guys uh, briefly, really, um, Adesanya is 12-0. He's a kickboxer, 6'4", got huge reach advantage. Everybody starts to talk about this guy as a, um, you know, very similar to John Jones, which is kind of ridiculous to even start to get into that. I understand his stature and his the physical attributes that are there, but uh, putting him in the John Jones category, or at least even kind of talking about they are similar, it's a little a little much right now. With uh, Adesanya has one fight in the UFC, um, you know he's a BJJ uh, blue belt, and uh, you know his standing game is terrific. I mean we know he's got the great kicks, he's flashy, he's got great reach, you know he's able to move around the cage pretty well. But the one thing that I saw about him was the fact that any pressure. In that fight, in his only fight in the UFC, any pressure, he he struggled a little bit with it. He was not able to push away from the cage. He was getting smothered up against the cage, and he was just not able to really do much and didn't have much answers for it. Now, that started to, to um, you know, worry me a little bit, but also the fact that he's never been past the second round in his, <clears throat> in his professional career, in his uh, MMA professional career. So out of the 12 fights, he's not seen that. So... This fight here, you know, if he starts to go to deep water and he gets smothered a lot, who knows how he's going to come back from that, how he's really going to react to that. Um, you know, and he's also fought very low competition with, within his career. You know, you got um, uh, Veretti, uh, Vittori, I'm sorry, is, uh, you know, 12-3. and three. This will be his fifth fight in the UFC. He's 2-1-1 one one since entering the UFC. He's got great takedowns. Out of his last few fights, he's taken his opponent down multiple times. Um, and he's able to, to keep that position as well. So he's able to get the guy down and really able to keep him uh, down there. Out of his 12 wins, eight are by submission. Um, and out of those eight, two of them, he's, he's submitted black belts. So when he's down there, he knows what he's doing. He's down there and he's able to really manipulate movement and continue to really impose his will when they're on the ground. So I really like that about him. Um, he's great at also closing the distance and uh, he's very durable. So when he gets in there and when he's able to get in tight and work the clinch and make it very dirty, he's able to at least be durable. He can take punches, but he can keep his pressure on. He's a very strong guy. And that is where, when you look at the price tag and you look at where these guys set up, and uh, uh, you know, I, I think Marvin really at plus 250 is a great price tag for a guy that I think this is a very, a, this should this is very very could go either way. I definitely could see it going either way because where this fight could possibly go. But the fact that um, uh, Vittori is going to be able to, he knows he can't stand there and just stand in front <clears throat> of Adesanya. He knows he can. Vittori knows that he's going to have to get close, smother him for three rounds, get the takedowns, and I think he's going to be able to muscle him close. I think he's going to be able to continually make it a dirty fight and not have to stand out. Of course, there's going to be moments where there's going to be distance and Adesanya is going to be able to throw some flashy kicks around. But I think stuff like that is going to get him in trouble. I think he's going to throw some flashy stuff. And I think it's going to be a bum rush uh, for uh, Vittori. I think Vittori is, is uh, you know going to be able to keep it close in the clinch, work it. I see a decision victory more for uh, Vittori. I think that he's just going to smother him and keep the ground control, keep the, the clinch control. And if he can kind of stay out of, out of harm's way uh, and... and, and really keep that space and keep no space and keep it close, I think a plus 250 is excellent uh, value uh, for uh, Vittori. I think that, you know, the hype train is behind Adesanya and, you know, the odds keep kind of creeping up for him as well. You know, I think it was, you know, around like 210. Now it's at 265. Um, Vittori was plus 200. Now he's plus 250. You know, the hype train's there. You start saying, calling the guy a miniature John Jones. The money will start to shift that way. I think that the experience, 
I think that, you know, uh, how he's going to leverage the takedowns and his ability to take to take his opponent down, I think Vittori is where I'm going to put my money. I'm putting one unit on Vittori, on Marvin Vittori, plus 250. That'll be a one-unit play. I do see a decision victory more in that, but we will see how that goes. So that's my one-unit play. Now, the other play, my best bet play here for two units, is going to be in the Carlos Condit versus Alex Oliveira. Fight, and let's just pull this up here. Now, you know, looking back at, at Carlos Condit, I mean, Carlos Condit is, you know, he's a great fighter. I mean, he has fought some of the who's who of this division. You know, if we go back here, I mean, he, I mean, you know, you know, Nick Diaz, uh, G, uh, George St. Pierre, uh, Johnny Hendricks, um, Martin Chapman, Tyrone Woodley, Tiago Alves, uh, Robbie Lawler, Damian Maya, Neil Magny. I mean, he has, I mean, this is above and beyond, uh, you know, some of the guys who people have fought. Now, going back as well, though, you looked at, you know, the, the Nick Diaz fight, that was 2012. But if you go back here, out of those fights, he's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So out of his last eight fights, he's lost one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So he has, he has legitimately, out of his last eight fights, lost seven of them. Now, again, it's against the top level competition. Um, and he also has had been out of action for a while. And in that fight with Neil Magny, and I rewatched it last night, I just thought he looked out of sync. He looked very rusty. Um, and it just wasn't the conduct that we're used to. The, the guy who goes in there and he brawls, but he's very technical with his brawling. You know, he's very, very technical. He's 30 and 11 in his career, um, you know, and he is, you know, he is that that figure that you look at. And you got to say this guy is has been one of the top guys in this division for a long time. But then when you really look at the wins and losses, he has lost against a lot. I'm sorry, I think he actually lost six of his last eight. But, you know, he's lost a good amount of fights against some top-level opponents. Now, Alex Oliveira, on the other hand, he's 17-4. Uh, and four. And, but, but wait, actually, before we get to that, I want to give you the odds. The odds are um, Alex Oliveira is minus 175, and Carlos Condit is plus 165. And uh, Oliveira actually came in on short notice. It's about two weeks short notice. But I actually feel that's going to help him in this fight. Oddly, I just feel like it's going to help him in this fight. Um, uh, Matt Brown was the guy who was supposed to be fighting Carlos Condit. I think they're, they're definitely two different fighters, uh, Matt, uh, Matt Brown and, and Oliveira. I like Oliveira's stand-up game. I think that he's, he's doing very well on his stand-up game. He um, was on a five-fight win streak before he lost to Yancey uh, Medeiros, and that which was a complete brawl, um, I mean, you know, Fight of the year candidate, uh, you know. Fight, you know. They had one of the best first rounds I think you could possibly see in the UFC. But he ended up losing, and I think the only reason he even lost that fight is because of the fact that that early punch broke his nose, exploded his nose. I mean, he was pouring blood out of his nose. He was every time he he was breathing, you could see the the blood pouring out even more, and he still was able to keep that fight very close. And I really like the way that he's he's good on the ground. He's able to take opponents to the ground. He's got um, a lot of ability when it comes to throwing combinations together, putting together with leg kicks. I really like his cage movement. I think a lot of that is going to be going to be a, a big part of how he could, how he has this path to victory, but also the fact that Neil, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, Neil Magny was able to ragdoll uh, Condit in the last fight. I mean, he was able to, I mean, although Magny is Definitely a different fighter compared to Oliveira, but he was just able to really work those takedowns. And that's something throughout Condit's career that he has struggled with, with takedown defense. He has just struggled with it. I really feel that Alex Oliveira is going to be able to work the clinch and, again, get in close. Kind of the same thing that I do see uh, Vittori doing, that I see him getting in close, working takedowns, working position, winning rounds, and... I don't really think the gas tank is there for Condit, but Condit again, it's I it just I did not like the ring rust that I saw in that last fight. He looked slow, he did not throw combinations clean, and I didn't like it. I just really didn't like it. Even when I was watching, I'm like, this just doesn't feel like the same guy 
that I'm used to, uh, you know, cheering for. You know, he just wasn't the wasn't the. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a Condit fan, but I just don't think that he's gonna be able to beat Cowboy uh, Oliveira in this fight. I think he's gonna take him, pick him apart from the outside, and I think that when he needs to, he's gonna be able to get in close and get the takedowns. This could be another decision victory here, but look for the takedowns. I think that's gonna be the key part of this fight. That he's gonna work those. Condit's gonna get caught down uh, on the ground on his back. Uh, you know, for a full round, I could see, you know, things like that happening where he's going to be able to really, really work the gas tank of Condit. So I have two units on um, Alex Oliveira at minus 175. And again, our best bet plays this year are 15 wins, six losses, plus 12.35 units. So that will be our best bet play. Alex Oliveira, two units. Our one unit play is going to be on Marvin Vittori. And that's going to be a one unit at plus 250. And again, tomorrow we will be uh, posting our, dis our discussion thread. And uh, I'll be putting up that video. So we'll, I'll also be going over our hero parlay that we're going to be doing. And just overall more conversation about, uh, about what's kind of going on here at UFC on Fox 29. So we'll get into more of that. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Like, head kick the bell icon. Get involved with Fight Club TV. And I will see you guys tomorrow in the discussion thread. Let me know what you guys are picking. What are your straight bets? What are your straight plays? Do you agree? Do you disagree with um, my two plays here? And uh, what else do you guys like on the main card? Waterson, you like Casey? Let's see how it goes. So this is Mr. UFC Vegas, Fight Club TV.